Welcome, welcome to the evening show with Jackie Brambles. This is the home of great conversations with your favourite living legends of the 70s, 80s and 90s. Tonight, we are fortunate enough to be chatting to a legend of 80s R&B. Our opening track, Criticise, was a huge hit for our special guest in 1985. And it's such a pleasure to welcome Alexander O'Neill. Hi, Jackie. How are you, darling? I'm great. How are you doing? Uh, we're doing just fine over here. Where are we speaking to you? Where Where are you right now? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay, so home. That is home for you, right? It has yep. been for a long, long time. Yep. So it's a big year for you as you kick off your farewell Time to Say Goodbye tour. Um, it, it starts in September and goes until October. Then there's a break and you return to continue the tour in May with the final farewell performance at the Royal Albert Hall in June, right? Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back over to the UK. Um, yeah, it's always big fun over there. Well, you've always been very popular here and had enormous success here in the UK, haven't you? Is it kind of like your second home? Yes, it definitely is like my second home, for sure. You know, I've stayed all, stayed over there. I've stayed up in Manchester for a while, lived down in London for a while. So, yeah, I, I do and I kind of know my way around a little bit, you know. So what we like to do on these uh, great conversations, Alexander, is to take a deep dive into your background to figure out some of the musical influences that have molded you along the way. I know you were born in the Deep South in Mississippi. So how did you end up in the far north of the States uh, in Minnesota? Came to Minneapolis from Chicago. So, yeah. Minneapolis, you know, it has, it's one of these sort of little, it's a niche town where it had such a strong and very particular music sound and music scene. You know, obviously Prince and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and yourself all coming up in and around uh, a city that's not a huge place, you know, but it had this incredibly rich musical life. Yeah, well, we've always been a very rich musical community, close-knit musical community here in Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul. You know, uh, obviously the Minneapolis sound was developed, uh, started by Prince, you know, and we kind of, all of our musicians, of course, we all found our way around it and all found our way, our place in it, you know, so we, we it was good to be able to contribute to what the Minneapolis music scene, yeah. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this Let's go crazy from the seminal Purple Rain album. That's Prince, who put Minneapolis on the map musically with his Paisley Park Studios. And it's also long been the home of our special guest on The Great Conversation tonight, Alexander O'Neill. So, Alexander, when you were starting out in the music scene or perhaps when you were making your way a little bit, you know, can you sort of share who your peers were that you were coming up with? What other young performers were around that were trying to make their way at the same time as you? Actually, Mid Condition, uh, we saw a lot of little young groups like Mid Condition, Next, and, you know, uh, Sounds of Blackness was coming up, you know, so we had to a lot of up-and-coming groups, you know, we were just starting out ourselves, and so we just tried to concentrate on nailing that down. Of course, and then, uh, I know, as you, as you mentioned, Prince, and the, were you a part of the band, The Time? I was with a group called Flight Time, who went on to be The Time, you know, I started out that project and then I ended up getting fired by Prince before I got hired, <laughs> getting fired at the same time as getting hired. So, you know, uh just didn't work out, you know. But, uh yeah, uh you know, a lot of times, you know, Jackie, good things come from bad situations sometimes. You know what perceive you can perceive to be bad situations really wasn't that bad. It just wasn't my time. No, and, and and as you say, if you had been a part of that band, you wouldn't have become Alexander O'Neill, the solo artist. So in many ways, that kind of did you a favor. Well, that could have been very well true, you know, because it's Jackie, as you know, you know, just because you're lead singer of a band doesn't mean you're going to have a career of your own. You know, a lot of people have, some people have succeeded at that, at, you know, at, at doing that. Yeah. And there's a lot that has not. It is good that I came out as a solo artist act and uh was so glad working with great producers like jimmy jam and terry lewis but you know it's not that difficult jackie when you you know been in the band with guys they know your sound they know who you are they know what your capabilities are right and so they are poor yeah you know they had made me they came home from california once and i was perform, still performing in local music scene 
downtown Minneapolis, a club called the Chicago Bar. Right. And they came in and they saw my determination. Right. And they had just did a the first project with the SOS band, a song called High Hopes. Oh, okay. And so they said, you know, once they got the you know feet planted firmly in the on the ground in the music industry that they would, you know, come back and help me get a deal. Well, that's exactly what happened. It wasn't, I don't even think it was a year later. And that was fortunate. I always knew that I would get a deal. I just didn't know where it come from. Right. But I never knew that I would take a trip and never leave the farm, you know. <laughs> so that's that's really a good thing. That's amazing. So Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis obviously went off and became these renowned producers. And they they promised you we'll come back for you once, once, we've, once we've got a bit of power and influence. And... You know, nine times out of ten, those things don't happen, but they did. They did. They did. Going back to your own inspirations, when you were growing up, I mean, as a, as a teenager, what kind of artists were you listening to and being inspired by? I was listening to all, all types of artists because, I, Jackie, I grew up in the 70s. We listened to all kinds of music, uh, from rock to country western to... We had a wealth of great music coming up out of the South, especially... You know where I come from because we've always had radio around us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially black radio. We've always had that. So I grew up with a lot of great artists I listened to. Uh, Donnie Hathaway was probably one of my biggest influences, the guy who I kind of really, really respected. Right. But then, you know, we had the standard guys. The James Brown was the first record I ever bought in my life. Oh, it was? A song called I Feel Good. Kind of <laughs> so that was the first song that. I ever bought for one dollar, you know, I'll never forget it. Oh. That was the first record. But the people like Jane Brown, uh the Stevie Wonders would listen to a lot of Motown, of course. Of course. And a lot of Stax artists. And the Al Greens and all those guys who came up out of Memphis that was so close to us, right? Right, of course. So they would, we could ident- we could identify with that sound and that sound of the South. So yeah, those were some of the artists that I was listening to. Wow! So good, so good, I got a year. James Brown, I Feel Good, first charted in 1966 and again in 1988. And the first record ever bought for one American dollar by our special guest, Alexander O'Neill. And we will be back to continue our great conversation with Alexander next. Welcome back to the Evening Show with Jackie Brambles, where it's just you, me, and our special guest, Alexander O'Deal, cozying on in for a great conversation with a soundtrack curated from Alexander's most meaningful musical memories. So before the break, uh, we found out that the first record you ever bought, Alexander, was James Brown. Do you recall the first ever live gig of note that you saw as a youngster? I probably have to be, probably have to be Earth, Wind & Fire in Minneapolis at the Met Center back in long time ago. Uh, but I tell you, we've almost not made it because it's so cold, you know. Okay. It gets so cold up in the winter sometimes. But, uh, yeah, it was Earth, Wind & Fire at the Met Center. So, yeah. Yeah. And who? And I would have never known that I would, years later, that Phil Bailey and I would be friends. Well, I never, and I can say, say that because when I, they did Wembley the last five, six, maybe longer than that, Wembley Arena, and uh, they called me up on stage. Right. I was blown away. If I, you know, if no one could pitch me, <laughs> let me know that I was still living. You know, when Philip called me up on stage to add me up on, I was just out of my gall, you know. That's one of those full circle moments, isn't it, Alexander, where, you know, as you say, somebody that you admired before you became a well-known artist yourself, when they become an equal, when they become a peer and they're asking you to come up on their stage, that's a kind of a pinch me moment, as you said. Yeah, that is a so pinch me moment, you know, and it was great. It's one that I'll never forget and it was a great honour. From 1979, Boogie Wonderland from Earth, Wind & Fire, who went from being the artist Alexander O'Neill first saw live in concert to becoming his friends and peers. Uh, and when you came over to the UK and started to get success here, was it a very different music scene than the one in the US? Well, for me it was because I didn't know anything about the UK. And I definitely didn't know anything about the UK stance on R&B music, you know? And then when I got there, you know, I, uh, it was so amazing because the first night I got there, 
I got a black cab and went to a nightclub, uh, a popular black club. I think it was called the People's Club. Something right. Back in the day. Or it could have been Gullibus, one of those two. Back then, it wasn't popular for, to have a black cab and have a black cab driver. Okay? <laughs> that was uh, unheard of, almost, you know? Well, guess what? I walked out of the hotel. Right. Uh, I'll never forget that. It was the Motion Hotel right off of Oxford Street up there. And uh, uh, it was just a little free bag hotel, but the people that were so kind <laughs> and so nice, you know. And that was the first time I walked out and I said, well, what's going on? Where's the black people? Where's the music scene? Where's... He said, well, this is the thing that took me to Gulliver's, this club called Gulliver's. Right. And uh, I went there and met a few people and came back. So that was my first experience in England, but I didn't know anything about that. They knew anything about me or my music. Okay. And I think England knew more about what Alexander O'Neill was going to become <laughs> than I could even imagine at that time. In, in uh, London and in the UK and England period, you know, there's a wealth of great music. You know, they don't suffer from great music. Okay. But we had no knowledge that they had any knowledge of black music. And everything is based on, you know, one thing about musicians and music, Jackie, we all steal from each other, okay? In one way or another, it's all, so nobody has a monopoly on yeah. the music scene. You put it out there, you either like it or you don't like it. But to be embraced by my British fans was absolutely an honor. It's still an honor today. It's a, we've been together for a long time. And of course, I love performing there for my British fans. And they give me so much love, and I like to give it back to them in return. Well, I, I wonder as well if you kind of recognize, I mean, so much of the big music, you know, that came out of the UK in that British invasion that, you know, did so well in the US charts, the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, they, they're all citing, you know, Robert Johnson, uh, you know, and, and kind of Delta Blues as their inspiration and the things that influenced them. So... You know, as you say, there's sort of this, there's no borders when it comes to music, right? No, they are, they are, that's one good thing about it. And, and, and you know, the, 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 not only just the British invasion, but you had like a wealth of artists that have been respected and loved here, you know, from Elton all the way through. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and true love, you know, it's not just because of the music, it's, it's a, it's a genuine kinship. So, uh, yeah, it's great to be a part of that. It's great to come from this side of the water and come over there and be embraced. Elton John with Nikita featuring George Michael on backing vocals, who, who was another buddy of yours, right, Alexander? Yeah, we used to hang out at a club called Brown's. Oh so, yeah, uh, down. Yeah, everybody knows Brown. You go and you, <laughs> I remember Brown. And everybody, uh, uh, record company. When I was with Sony, it was like you guys go in Brown in one night, and you come out of that two days later. <laughs> 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 it, was, it was a late night club, wasn't it? You know, so uh, we used to yeah. go and hang out there, and and I've had uh, you know interaction with George, uh, boy George. Uh, kind of had, you know, in a reaction. And it's just great to be in the company of those guys who have yeah. just had such huge success. Sometimes you, you know, something, Jackie, sometimes it doesn't matter how much success you have, you still kind of smitten by other people's success. Of course. You know, and when you're hanging out with them and they've had all these huge records and all this stuff here and maybe bigger than your records have been, you know, it's kind of an honor. It's like a real honor, one that you never. Was there ever anyone, Alexander, that you collaborate that, that you would have loved to have collaborated with or would still like to collaborate with in terms of writing music with or doing a duet? It can be British, can be American, anything like that. Anybody that you thought, oh, just that would be, you know, dream come true stuff. I'd love to do a duet with Patty LaBelle. You know, Patty, I've become, you know, I never would have known when I was listening to her song back then when I was a kid, kind of, kind of, kind of a kid. I don't know if I ever was one. Yeah. Kind of a kid. And uh, to, call, to call people like Gladys Knight and Patty LaBelle my friends, know them personally, and uh, be on a first name basis. 
So I never would have dreamt to do that, but I, but I could that way for somebody who's too late. <laughs> We're getting all older. Yeah. Uh, it would definitely, but I'd love to do a duet with Patty. Patty LaBelle, a new attitude from the 1984 soundtrack of Beverly Hills Cop. How great would it be to hear a Patty and Alexander duet? You never know. Stranger things have happened. And we will be back with more great conversation and musical memories from our special guest, Alexander O'Neill, next. Can I get some nasty bass? The unmistakable sound of a Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis production on Fake. A hit in 1987, then 88, for our special guest on The Great Conversation tonight, Alexander O'Neill. He is beaming in from his home in Minneapolis to share his musical memories. And um, of all the artists that you met on your journey, your ascent through the music business, Alexander, who, who in particular has guided or advised or offered you wise counsel along the way? You know, it's so Jackie, it's so amazing because I've learned a lot from female artists, a lot of female artists for being in the music industry. Really? Uh, having having these candid conversations, sitting down when on tour, with on tour with Patty, on tour with Gladys. And I've learned quite a few things, you know, from them. You know, uh, Gladys, they, they've showed me the real definition of being successful and a being successful artist. Oh. You know, Gladys told me, she said, Alex, you know, sometimes the bigger they are, the nicer they are, which pretty much I equate is the bigger you are, the more successful you are as an artist, the kinder and nicer person you should be because you've been blessed to have this opportunity, right? Right. So you have no reason to be a jerk or to, to be, you know, someone that's unkind. Yes. And they, everybody, all those people I work with, they wear kindness on their sleeve. That's what I learned the most. You can be a star. But you don't have to be a star, a stuck-up star. You know, I've always been, I just do what I do, Jackie. But I've just, been, I just, I just, but I've always kept it simple and I've always been me. What you, when you meet Alexander O'Neill, what you get is the same guy all day, every day. If there's not one guy for the music industry, one guy for life, one guy, it's the same guy, you know. And I've had, I've had. That's, well, that's true authenticity. I've had my own protocol. A long time before I had a record deal of the kind of person that I wanted to become. You know, uh, kindness and being amenable to people, being accessible to my fans, you know, because they're the ones that really have made you who you are. And you should, and, you take, and I've always been the guy that takes the time out to, to deal with them. And I'm so thankful. And I'm just thankful for all my fans all over the world. I'm very thankful for my fans in the UK. Well, you said you learned that graciousness from conversations with Gladys Knight. Uh, so let's play your favorite track of hers. Uh, uh, Midnight Train to Georgia. Goodness gracious, that's my hit. <laughs> <laughs> Nineteen seventy six, midnight train to Georgia from Gladys Knight and the Pips as chosen by our guest tonight, Alexander O'Neill. We've got time to squeeze one more track in this evening. So um Alexander, pick your pick your favorite song from your own repertoire. Which track do you most enjoy performing? I would say my favorite song to perform. Oh God. That's quite a few. Uh what is this thing called up? Because I still don't know the definition of <laughs> I still don't know the definition of what is this thing called up. Uh it's just a great up tempo, one of the most classic, iconic, funky songs that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, I think, has ever written. So, yeah. Oh, Alexander, thank you so much indeed for taking the time to join us. And we look forward to seeing you in the UK very soon. Thank you, Jack. And thanks for talking to me, sweetie. Okay, have a blessed day. Take care. All right, baby. Alexander O'Neill, charming.